John Ungeyer. Joseph Albert. Here. Roby Peter Staples. Here. Don, Donna Corbin Serbinski. Here. Joseph Perello. And Frank Alimo. Here. Okay, can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America, America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'll read the fire evacuation announcement. In case of fire, there are two ways to exit the chambers. To my left, exit through the council chamber doors, turn left and walk down one flight of stairs and out the building, or exit the door to the rear of these chambers. In either case, once out of the building, walk a safe distance away from the building. Okay, um, executive session, we have nothing, Jim, right? Okay. And public participation. Is there anybody in the audience wishing to address the agency? Okay. Public hearings, none scheduled. Correspondence? Okay. Uh, since we're working off of agenda from last meeting that was um, canceled, um, the last agenda had the, the list of correspondence. So I think everyone has them. And if I miss something or you have any questions, just interrupt me and let me know. Uh, you should have the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission notice of actions for 719 through September 9th, uh, as well as the meeting for, uh, I think there was one additional one that was added August 9th. Yep, that's, that's I'm sorry, yep, August 9th, correct. So yeah, it should be three of those. There's a special meeting on the 9th, a regular meeting on the 9th. Oh, I'm sorry, two special meetings. Is it? I'm all screwed up. No, one special meeting on the 9th, a uh, meeting on the 19th, and one on September 6th. Okay. Uh, there's a copy of the Habitat Summer 2012 newsletter for your review. copy of uh, the approval for authorization from Connecticut Department of Transportation and that's regarding a statewide uh, drainage maintenance activities any questions on that um, I think the thing to note what I found uh, most interesting in this is that it's 50 feet from the road they, they're allowed to clean out culverts to extend of 50 feet from the edge of road so those activity is all permitted under this this document. And they just need to no notify us. Correct. Right. Okay. okay. Um, next next piece of correspondence is the building permit approvals um, from July 17th through August 29th. And again, that mostly is um, residential sheds. Uh, additions, pools, decks. Okay. Um, also have a uh, legislative update regarding the Wetlands Act. I want to have that. Okay. And that has to do with the uh, time period for permits. Okay. And then the last piece that I have is the reminder letter that uh, everyone should have received regarding attendance to the meetings. Um, one correction to that letter that went out um, incorrectly, I, I had written that the we had vacancies for full and alternative uh, alternate positions, and that's not true. We are fully, fully uh, appointed, so we have we have ten people. Um, so getting a quorum should be should, should be easy going forward. And that's it for correspondence. I believe it's from the edge of road. It's from the end of their pipe. They're allowed to go downstream or upstream 50 feet from a culvert. You got it. 
turn it on and leave it on. Definitely. Anyway. <laughs> okay. I'm um, on. <laughs> um, co um, commissioner's correspondence. We'll start down at the end. Roby, do you have anything? No. Okay. Donna? No, I don't. Joseph? All right. A um, couple questions, actually. Uh, Freshwater Brook, any update on that? No. Uh, we had put in a mitigation uh, grant for some mitigation work along Freshwater Brook, and no no action has been taken on that, no decisions whether or not we receive the, the grant or not. To fix the, to fix the brook? We haven't... Uh, no, that they have many decisions. The, the, the grant itself was submitted to DEP, yep. DEP, um, and they weren't looking to make decisions until fall, so there's been no... So how is the status of that river or brook where the... Unchanged. Ero where the erosion <laughs> is occurring? Down, downstream? Yeah. No, that, not, we haven't even addressed that. That's uh, still outstanding. That's still outstanding? Correct. Do you know if there's no feedback on that at all then, huh? No, the grant that we applied for was for work upstream of the dam. Right. Um, there's been some discussion um, with the engineering department and myself about what to do downstream, um, but no, no decisions have been made. or There hasn't any, been any contracts or nothing? No. Um, one other uh, quick question: ART mini, uh, minutes that uh, that go on, the questions that are asked, and, and mm -hmm. can we start receiving some of those now that we're starting to get applications back? Yes, so that will help us with uh, uh, any redundant questions that you know we may ask that may have already been asked. Um, is there any uh, any other issues that? Uh, Mr. Butler's property that's all taken care of? Uh, yes, that... He's got that in his... Yeah, and I well, was hoping to have a, a letter a couple of meetings ago. We talked about having a, a final letter put together, um, and we we joked about not having one or a letter already put... You know, there's no boilerplate for someone who actually got out of a violation, so I haven't drafted that letter yet, and I will for next meeting. Okay, thank you. And that's, the joke. that's it? Yeah. Okay. Um, Jill? Um, yes, I'd just like to, um, from our July 17th meeting, I just wanted to apologize actually to the Enfield Conservation Commission. I um, improperly addressed them and it was sort of a tongue-tied thing and I just wanted to mention that I apologize to them because I don't want it to, to diminish their, um, their importance to us and I wanted to state on the record that I apologize for incorrectly addressing them as a commission and I want them to know that they are an important part of Enfield's community and, and our commissions. Thank you. That's it. Frank? I have nothing. <clears throat> Excuse me, nothing. Okay. Um, I've got a few things. Um, number one, I hope everybody received Jose's email about the training um, November 10th. I don't have a date where he, I'm sure if you go down in there, it'll tell you when it needs to be registered by, but if it looks pretty interesting, if anybody's interested, just let him know directly. And there is money in our budget for these, so um, I mean, we, he plans on that. Number two, um, I was going through, I was looking for past meeting minutes, Jim, and I went on the wetlands um, site on Enfield.org, and I noticed the slideshow that we had done a while back. Have you ever looked at that? No. Take a look at it. Um, I don't. I forgot who put it together. It may have been Katie. Um, but what we had done this time of year, I think we had taken one or two of the slides and actually put them on ETV, reminding residents that they shouldn't be putting their brush over escarpments, that type of thing. Okay. Maybe talk with Jose and find out if we can rerun those one or two slides, whatever we ran in the past, just as a reminder to people as the leaves start to fall. Okay. Um, and that, I think that's all I have at the moment. Okay. Um, okay, next on the agenda is approval of meeting minutes, July 17th, um, 2012 regular meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, motion made by Frank. Is there a second? Second. Second by Donna. All in favor? <coughs> okay. All in, abstain? You're gonna, okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, second is the meeting minutes of September 4th, 2012, re uh, regular meeting. Is, yeah, we do have minutes. What? 
Well, yeah, she technically had to make minutes. So is there a motion to, motion to approve made by Donna? Is there a second? Second. Second by Joe. All in second. favor? Okay. Opposed? Abstain. 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 Okay. Um, next on the agenda, Wetlands Agent Report, Jim. Okay, um, first item is a AAA 97 and 98. Uh, it was a uh, uh, administrative approval that I did for a TIA group, and what they're doing is continuing some sampling at the mobile station on Hazard Avenue. Um, there was a need to go in and do some more, I think uh, 11 more borings. Uh, nothing major, just very small diameter borings, and they would be repaved. So that was approved. Um, I think the work has already been completed. Uh, as I said earlier, the, the Butler violation has been resolved. Um, Mr. Butler did what he was uh, supposed to do, what we recommended. Uh, I had pictures to, to show that. Were, were the pictures ever distributed? No. Yeah, they weren't. Did you saw them? Didn't we see the, did we see the fin finished product? I, I'll make the I'll put, when you bring us the I'll put everything back together. Just, okay. We'll have the before so and during and after. We'll make it a yeah, complete there's, show. There's so many pictures on everything it. happened, mm. and, um, and so that's been taken care of. And I'd like to close that out and file it away. Uh, we have a, a current uh, violation, or uh, I sent out a letter to the carriage house uh, condominiums. Um, got an anonymous call that they were um, digging in within the water course that runs through their property. I uh, went out there and observed they were had a backhoe and a guy was uh, digging in the channel and I asked him to stop and uh, in my letter I, I expressed that they needed to come in and talk to the commission about um, what their activities were doing, what they were proposing to do there and as a result of what they had done, what they were going to do to, to remediate and, and fix what they what they already disturbed. Um, they couldn't make it to this meeting. They did send a letter. Uh, actually, they came in and spoke with Jose and I. We sat down and, and went over some ideas, and I expressed to them that they needed to come before this commission and um, explain what they would like to do and how they want to uh, resolve the issue. They weren't prepared at this time to come in today, and they will be here next meeting. Uh, one of the things that, um, that I provided to them was the original as-builts of the channel, uh, showing the grades and the, and the size of the channel. Uh, so I, in my opinion, it, it, at this point, it's best for them to restore it back to its uh, original condition and then stabilize the banks with some kind of seed mix. And they had some ideas for a seed mix, but they hadn't quite worked out all the details as far as shaping the channel and what they would do with the material. You know, I want to know where it's going to go and it needs to, cause currently what they have been doing was just digging out of the bottom of the channel and then just putting the material on the sides and, and whatever you know, shape or form they could. Um, and I don't think that's what's best for that area. So, uh, and the channel itself, the original design is very flat. And now that they went in kind of without a, a plan, without even a proof, you know, a proof plan or any plan, they have highs and lows which hold water. And, and I think it's important that we get them back to whatever smooth grade we can there so the water will continue to move through there and doesn't pond and cause mosquito problems and things like that. So okay. hopefully we'll have those uh, that information presented to us next meeting. And then you guys can act accordingly and uh, go from there. Um, Heritage Farms Detention Basin, <laughs> that was an approved uh, maintenance permit. Uh, I believe it was from 2010 and they had been waiting for a dry period to, to do the work, and that occurred uh, last month where they cleared out uh, sediment at the outlet pipes leading into the detention basin and um, stabilized the banks and added some landscape buffering there. And I'll have pictures for that as well for, for next meeting. Uh, Cloud Street is part of our uh, Roads 2010 referendum. Uh, they're redoing Cloud Street and, and many other streets in town. And as part of that project, they're redoing the storm drain outlet there at the end of Cloud Street and um, 
filling in the gully, not filling in the gully, but there's a lot, been a lot of erosion there over the years uh, on that escarpment. And part of the contract is to re reshape that and restabilize it. Um, and the work is continuing out there. And they're doing a nice job too, so. <coughs> Uh, 12 Leary Road was a uh, call I, I received regarding a dock that was built into the Scantic River, and I have not had a chance to go out there to further investigate that, but uh, I will do that. So there, apparently there's a, a dock in, in the middle of Scantic River. Okay. <laughs> uh, 30 Bacon Road uh, was a um, proposed... Uh, uh, the the, the uh, property owner decided to do some clearing there uh, without getting an approved plan. Um, so again, he's been instructed to stop his activities, and he has uh, ensured us that he'd bring a plan into planning and zoning as well as wetlands uh, to to say what he wants to do there and how he how it will you know, affect the wetlands. And um, if we don't get that very shortly, uh, he'll be getting a letter to uh, encourage him to to do that. And uh, 314 North Maple Street uh, was a complaint of um, illegal dumping um, behind a property. And I haven't had a chance to get access back there. Uh, it's not visible from the street. But um, I did receive two complaints on this from the same person. So I, I need to find a way to either fly in a helicopter or wow, <laughs> to see what's going on there. I don't know. But I, I can't see it from the road. so. I'll Have you spoken to the homeowner? Or? Uh, no, I haven't, haven't made contact with them. Okay. <laughs> okay, and that's it for my report. <clears throat> Next on the agenda, bond release. Joe, we, Joe Marie, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Before you continue, sure. question. Absolutely. I'm sorry. A uh, question on C on uh, Carriage House. Correct. Yes. Are they operating <coughs> under another permitted activity, or did they just happen to go work in the brook? Are no, they out they, there doing other permitted work? Not a carriage house, no. Um, the channel was constructed as part of the original permits, uh, I believe in the 80s when the, when the place was constructed. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess over the years they've took it upon themselves to go in and do some maintenance at time to time. Um, but this was you know, a major operation. They, mm -hmm. they were making quite a mess. And, uh, and did you see in the pictures? I think they're Yeah, there's there. some pictures yeah. attached, yeah. So, so they're not under there. I just thought they may have veered away from the area they were supposed to be in. No, no, it was, you know, it was, it was arbitrarily out there. Right. You know, and it, I think what I'd like to see as well as this commission is in, when someone, some condo association or other entity wants to do that kind of maintenance work, that they simply come in with a, an application to do such mm -hmm. and say how they're going to do it and what they're going to do. And we have a chance to weigh in and, and review that. So that's, that's Which what we did last year, I believe, with Heritage Farms, right? Exactly. Well, there you go. That and, right. That's an right. example. And, yep. and that's, yep. that's what we want to see out of this as well. Yeah, good idea. Thanks. Okay. Sorry, any other questions for Jim? No? Okay. Um, next on the agenda, bond release. We don't have anything. Um, old business, none. New business, nothing. Um, new applications to be received. DPN number 2012-03-31, Ken and Brenda Lindeland, proposed woodshop processing operation on Mullen Road. You come forward. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Attorney Tom Fahey, I represent Ken Linden, who's here with me to sign on my left. And Danny Steele is the project engineer on my right. As you may recall, we were here at the last meeting, which uh, didn't draw a quorum. We're back tonight with uh, basically a, you're here to accept the application, and we're here to ask you for a determination of no permit need based upon the fact that we're having no activity either on the wetlands or within the upland review area. And Dana is going to uh, um, uh, explain I'll, that, yeah, illustrate that yeah, to you on the site plan. Sit here. Microphone or should I come in? Just, just sit Do down at the a table. Sure. Sit here, I'll get a chair. 
Good. Just I'll sit at the table. I appreciate it. Could find you a mic. Just one second, Dana. Is it? Thank you. Good, good evening. For the record, Dana Steele, uh, um, project engineer for the, uh, uh, the, the applicant. Um, uh, Ken and Brenda uh, Lindelin um, have a uh, uh, agricultural uh, activity uh, pro um, use on, on uh, this property uh, and uh, on the adjacent property, and they are um, have actually already received a uh, previously a, a special use permit for to conduct this activity. They're a, it's an agricultural use. They uh, they work with um, uh, forest products. They they take trees that have been uh, cut down and and uh, grind them into uh, bark mulch and wood uh, wood chips that's used for uh, making paper and other uh, products depending on the the grade or quality of the wood. The, um, <clears throat> so this, 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 uh, this property has been uh, not used for that purpose, uh, but it was previously approved for, for the use. Um, it's currently been um, in, in an agricultural grow crop use. There's been corn on the property, squash, other, other vegetables um, over the years. There's nothing there currently. Uh, but um, uh, the site is, is uh, completely bare. Uh, there, it's uh, because of the inactivity this past year. It's grown in a, a, a little bit, but there's still a distinct tree line around the perimeter site, which I've um, uh, indicated on the plan there on the easel in dark green. It basically follows the uh, property line, um, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, parcel has. Uh, Wetlands uh, on it that have been identified uh, by our soil scientists. Uh, we submitted a uh, report uh, to your <coughs> wetland agent this afternoon by email, and I handed out a copy uh, just now, so you have that in front of you. Um, uh, this uh, area was uh, previously uh, delineated, uh, but it was some time ago. So we uh, what we did is we went out and and. The flags were all gone from what had been done before. So we went back and replaced the flags and then had the soil t scientists go out and look at it and see is it, is it accurate. And so he's uh, provided a report uh, uh, indicating that uh, uh, the flagging that, that we show are accurate. Um, I think one of the uh, items uh, that's of particular uh, importance, if, you, if you're familiar with the site or have, or have, um, have seen it in different conditions, he notes there, there are some low spots uh, on the, the, the property. Um, that's the, uh, in his last paragraph of the second page, uh, he notes some low-lying areas that may pond water from time to time, but he did not identify those as wetlands, though they do pond water from, from, from time to time. Uh, and so he's, he's indicated that it didn't miss his, uh, he didn't just not observe it. He did observe it, determined that it, it what didn't qualify as a as a wetland soil. So, if if, um, if you're familiar with the site, you may have noticed that. Um, the, the the last page of his report actually includes a, a map with a sketch showing those those locations. Actually, it didn't come out very well on this copy, did it? He's got it written in low spots in, it, in, in words, and below that is a is a shaded area um, uh, that's uh, right up right up near the road near Mullen Road. Um, as far as the activities that are going to be proposed on this site, uh, the applicant is going to construct a barn, uh, 7,200 square feet uh, in area, uh, located in the center of the site. Uh, there'll also be a, a an, another structure. Uh, of equal size uh, parallel with it 
uh, that I've marked in, in dark brown on the on the plan. Those are bins for the st for the uh, temporary storage of that, those uh, forest products as as they're prepared. Um, so surrounding the the barn uh, is going to be uh, uh, an impervious uh, pavement surface. The applicant's going to use pavement millings, like when you grind up a road, you have a leftover material is going to reuse that. Uh, uh, it compacts very hard, create, it creates a hard surface, not quite as smooth as, as, uh, as asphalt, uh, but nonetheless impervious uh, and uh, durable. And so the, um, uh, that's going to be uh, the base for that entire area from the, per the perimeter driveway around as well as the air all the areas in the center. Uh, so it's going to be um, a, a, a large impervious surface, and the reason for that is there's going to be stockpiles of, of uh, logs and uh, uh, chip, chip wood, too, or is it mainly just, just the logs stored? Logs and pulpwood. Small yeah. logs, large logs. Yeah, different, logs. different size wood products uh, uh, stockpiled in those areas within the perimeter of the, of the site. Um, <clears throat> the way the operation works is uh, trucks come in with, with, with the logs. They, um, They'll, they'll pull up to a scale, weighs them, and then they will uh, go around the site and where they can be un unloaded. Uh, there's a retaining wall in that middle driveway between uh, the, 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 the bisects, the, the, the perimeter circle. Uh, there's a retaining wall there that allows uh, the, uh, the, the trucks to be uh, loaded and, and un unloaded, um, mainly to, to be loaded uh, with, with products uh, from above, so they'll be down, down, down below the, uh, the uh, equipment. There'll be a payloader there that uh, moves the equi equipment around and uh, takes equipment off the trucks and and, and, and moves it through the operation. Um, the uh, after the trucks have been unloaded, they go back through the scale and weigh it again. The difference in the weight in terms of the weight of the product they do the same with the trucks that come in and take take the, the product out so so that's why you have a, um, uh, a scale a area there to the, uh, in the front and uh, in a, a driveway with a bypass area as well um, this this uh, this property is located with, within uh, uh, Bowens Brook watershed it's a tributary of Connecticut River um, the uh, the, the, the soils on this site are, are, are heavy, heavy soils. They're not uh, uh, conducive to infiltration. Uh, when we looked at what to do with the stormwater runoff from, from this site, uh, we looked at several alternatives uh, from uh, uh, long perimeter uh, uh, water quality swales to collect, to collect the runoff. Uh, and, um, and after Evaluating the the, the, hy the hydrology of the site and looking at before, for, and after, because the remainder of the of, of the site, go over to the map. You've got to, to orange on, on the plan. I've marked the wetlands in yellow. So there's a there's a strip of wetlands that goes through the property. Uh, here it's a drainage ditch. It's all it's all farmed right across here. There's uh, um, so this uh, some vegetation is growing up, but it's uh, um, it's been uh, all actively disturbed. The um, there's a d distinct swale that runs runs in, in, in this direction uh, through the property. The um, there's another small area of wetlands uh, inside of the property. The um, orange line is your 100 foot regulated area. So delineated that on the plan. As you can see, we have, we have no activity within your 100-foot your regulated area. Um, we did uh, one time look at going into the regulated area and putting ponds in to collect this runoff. But after doing the analysis, we found that although this impervious surface in here creates an increase in runoff from the site, changing all of these areas here uh, from agricultural exposed soils to uh, a meadow, it's going to be a planted with a 
a conservation mix uh, actually reduces the runoff in, in these areas. And the net result is that we don't have an increase in runoff. It's really an ideal situation to have paved areas that uh, sheet flow off of the paved areas through vegetation for an extended distance before getting to the wetland. Um, it's unusual that I have this, this kind of room uh, and usually we're pushing right up against the, 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 the wetland borders and, and uh, uh, trying to, to get as much as it, it, um, uh, uh, use of the, prop, of, the, of the land as we can. In this case, um, we're able to uh, maintain some significant buffers, not just uh, uh, the 100 foot regulated area, but an additional 50 feet uh, beyond the regulated area. We're proposing to seed that as well and to restrict um, mowing of, of that to just once a year, and that way, um, it can we can we can keep out uh, the um, uh, from becoming a forest where you get a lot of um, canopy cover and a lot of shade, and you don't get the, uh, um, the dense ground cover that, that provides for good filtration. But you maintain the, the the vegetation through that that strip. So. The green areas I've highlighted are those uh, those buffer strips, but the reality is that all of this area from the where the pervious area ends is going to is going to serve as a as a as a filter, and and, and so we decided not to construct. Uh, we, st we decided not to go into the regulated area or to into the upland review area. We decided not to um, uh, to construct ponds because doing so would require us to to collect the water <coughs> and then discharge it at a at a point source as opposed to keeping it spread out. So uh, we felt that that was um, uh, the, the most appropriate uh, alternative and so that's what, what we proposed. So um, this, uh, this site it, uh, did not require detention um, and uh, infiltration was not uh, feasible so we're doing sheet runoff with vegetative filtering and, uh, uh, and we believe that the, the extensive buffers are going to uh, result in no impacts to, to the wetlands. So we hope that uh, this project, which has no proposed activity within your 100-foot upland review area, um, that you can uh, uh, act on it tonight. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Jim? Uh, the applicants came in and spoke with uh, myself and and Jose uh, about this project and uh, I agree with what, what Dana has just uh, explained is that based on we always look at pre and post uh, runoff and because the existing condition as Dana said is an agricultural use going from agricultural to to a meadow is actually you know less less runoff so by adding the impervious for these uh, folks, the applicants' um, activity and doing the meadow, it, it is really a, a, a good situation. Uh, and, and again, we looked in, we talked about infiltration and detention, and because of the, the heavy soils, um, it really isn't feasible. What ended up happening is what, what they said it was a point discharge. We'd have to have some place where this water ultimately left the site uh, in a concentrated flow. And that's never an ideal situation. So I think what's presented there is, um, is, a, is a good practice. Um, start down here. Any questions, Roby? No. Okay. It's very profound. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have any. Uh, Thank you. Joe? Is, um, is there any sewer, any sewer system on this property at all? There's none, uh, none proposed. Uh, the, uh, it's, it's really just a, a, a spot for, for trucks to load and, and unload. They do have facilities uh, down, down the street, so that's where their employees will, will, will go. They come up here and uh, work for a while and, and then take their breaks down at the other, the other site. Yeah, the whole yard's run by one guy. Okay. Um, is there a, your st snow stockpile, is there any place where you... You're gonna plow that snow. Is it, where is it gonna go? I mean, I know there's some areas there. The concern with the uh, millings getting torn up, put into the wetlands area, maybe running off. 
you know, it's, is there some kind of plan that you have where the stockpile areas may be? We haven't designated uh, areas, but we certainly could, could, could add that to the plan. Um, what, what are your, you're going to be plowing this, uh, this area? Or yeah, are you I mean, to operate in the winter? we'll be operating in the winter. I mean, I don't know how much plowing we'll be needing to do. I mean, these loaders that we'll be using are enormous. So. Right. But what about the, the trailers that come through there? The trailers, that area will have to be plowed and it wouldn't be much more of a, a stockpile for that area to be plowed and piled, whether you want it in the center or wherever you guys Typically, just, just like a, if, if, if all they're going to be plowing is, is, is the driveways, they're probably just going to windrow it along, along the edges as opposed to picking it up with a loader and, and stockpiling it right. somewhere, I would think. Right. In fact, you, you'll probably be, um, are you, are you, will, will you have a plow or will, you, will the loader be We have the, pushers. Right. So they have the rubber on the bottom. And right. So it's, they don't really disturb the millings. They got that rubber two-inch piece, so it kind of glides over them. Bought it about five years ago and saves us a lot of time. Oh, that's good. So I mean, we, we do have the advantage as well uh, if there is any uh, pushing of, of, of millings. Um, uh, we're a good distance from the wetlands, so it's still you still got that that the vegetative buffer for those millings to have to get through. You know, and, uh, on certain applications, you know, the, the pond is like is right next to the parking lot and, or the, the area, so that might be be uh, more of an acute issue. So we got an additional yeah. 50 feet beyond the regulated area. Yeah, it's 150 area. feet from the well. Okay. So, All right. Or, and, and more. You know, the, these areas <coughs> right. is, is quite a bit more. Right. 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 Dana, if you could probably point out on on that plan, probably the closest from a, a plowed area to the wetland buffer is probably 75 feet, maybe that corner there. Yeah, this is the tightest spot, this corner right here, and you've got uh, 100 and just shy of 150 here. I think we had that we, we um, dipped into that that 50 foot buffer just a couple of feet. So. It's and there's nothing on that. Almost on that south, there. on that south side, there's no, there's no um, delineated wetlands on the there's, south there's side. No, there's no wetlands over on this side, so on that other property, close to the property line there. Okay. But, but you have a, an existing tree line, and, and the wetlands continue this direction. Okay. It's not that a property isn't sloped down towards the back, right? There's no like runoff that's going to run towards the next property down. It's a, it, it's a ridge through here. The hot where the activity is is the, is the high point of the okay. hill and so it, it sheds in, in both directions uh, towards towards the, the two wetlands. In fact if we were going to do ponds we were some alternatives we looked at we had two ponds one on each side. Mm -hmm. I have no other questions so it's time. Okay. Jill? Um, I may be overthinking this but Mr. Albert made me think of a question when you he asked about if there would be any um, drainage um, ditches um, how long would the mulch be um, in the bunkers I know that um, mulch can have a, um, a reaction on itself and cause a fire if it's if it's stockpiled for a bit of time if there were a fire and then we had um, you know excessive water be putting out the fire what would the effect then be if it's at the high point going down into the wetlands well um, I think at pretty much any any design that we came up with would involve water flowing towards the wetlands because that's just where where it goes so the question is do we have enough um, buffering and and filtering to, uh, to to mitigate any any situations like that and in this case you know, we have the 150 mm -hmm. plus feet of uh, a vegetated area uh, that that, that water is going to have to flow through before it even gets to the well okay so, so with the likelihood of I don't know how long it being in the bunkers if there were a fire do you yeah. believe um, that there is enough space to to buffer that before the wetlands? James? Yeah. You know, again, going back to whenever you concentrate flows, you you could put a lot of water 150 feet away from something, and by the time it goes 150 feet in this kind of a slope, you might not even find water anymore, to be honest. Uh, there's plenty of room for that. 
And I don't think you, these materials won't be staying along. The idea is to process them and, yeah. them right and get them out of there. Exactly. So they're not going to be sitting there. two or three days. Okay. Yeah. Well, so yeah. It's a product that they're, they're selling. So they, it has value, so they don't want to let it sit there. Sure. Yeah, if maybe Great. I could add this. Interestingly, in, in uh, Kurt's business, the, actually, they, they don't just uh, take the material and stockpile it and wait for someone to buy it. It's already sold. Uh, in other words, they have a contract, and they, they make it, and they just stockpile it until they deliver it. Yeah. It's a daily a fill, a daily Excellent. fill, a daily contract. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Five, Good. ten years out. Thank you. Frank? A couple of questions. Um, the watershed you had mentioned, you said Berman's Brook, you mean Beeman's Brook? Beeman's Brook. Okay. Um, Hythe and uh, what are the bunkers made out of? It's a, uh, Bowen, Bowen's Brook, B O W E Y N S. Is that, as you pronounce it, Beeman's? It's Beeman's Brook. Yeah. No, it's just, I wanted to make sure. Local, local knowledge. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Local knowledge, that's right, local knowledge topic of many discussions in this community. Um, so what are the, what'd you say, I'm sorry, did you say what the bunkers were constructed out of and the height? They're uh, a concrete. Um, concrete bunkers, they hold the wood chips, yeah. keep them clean, how so high, then we ship. How high are they? Eight feet, tops, maybe 10. I don't, we haven't really determined exactly how high, but okay. you know, enough for a loader to get in so it's not spilling all over the place. Yep. And roof over it? yeah, they'll be covered. Yeah, to keep the moisture, keep the moisture out. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the road. You mentioned the millings, and so we have logging trucks coming in, correct? Yes. So those are extremely, extremely heavy. So have you calculated um, how much millings you need? What you're going to need under that for a base? Because where I'm going with this is that the runoff, the sheeting of the water. Because the, cause you're gonna have to crown that road, so you can continue what you want what you want to accomplish. So the water keeps. Yeah. It's, 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 all, so it's all it's graded so that it sheets. The same trucks down your other side. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 Okay, there. Pretty right. substantial uh, section down, um, and so in our experience, uh, yeah. um, it's, it's it works for the um, H20 high, highway loadings. Which mm -hmm. if, a, if a truck is rated for being on the highway then, then the H20 design is uh, so that's the specifications you basically use is the H20 okay all right and one other thing on the soil scientist I see a certification number that's his credentials is it will there be a um, seal does he have a seal like an engineer sealed stamp just for the record so okay do we do we have a list or something that we look at these numbers to? And I'm not yeah, being critical. I just want to make sure for the record down the road that we have. I, I think in the, uh, the document that Dana handed out tonight, um, there's a little dossier on the people from Soil and Environmental Services. And you can see they're both members of yep. the uh, SSS, uh, SNE, which is the Soil Society of Soil Scientists of Southern New England, which is the governing body for... And uh, administratively, that's fine with your office? Yeah, correct. Okay. And just one more thing. The scales on that are green. Almost the same color as that line. Uh, um, is that the scale you made green on there next to the, the bin? No, no, there's no scale. On no, no. That. Up. Oh, oh, this scale. That scale, scale. yes. I see, the, the, for weighing the trucks. Right. I think you meant it. Good. Okay. Like, yeah. No, 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 that, that scale. <laughs> the weighing scale. The money the money pit. Right. <laughs> um, no, it's just the same color as... Uh, yeah, it's this, uh, gray, this gray area uh, here. Okay. Um, I should have colored that in better. That's okay. I'm not picking on you. I just <laughs> want to make sure. I have no other questions. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Any further comments, questions? Yes. No. Okay, we are um, here this evening to decide whether or not they need a permit. So if somebody would like to make that decision. I just have one, qu oh, one quick question. Um, on the application, the wetlands located on a property in square, square feet and wetlands to be impacted. Is there any need, um, need to fill that out for the record, Jim? 
So nothing is going to be affected in that area? Uh, uh, typically that's used for for expressing to, to us in the application what if they're going to be working in the wetland or in the review area, what that area would be that's going to be in those areas. Uh, they're not proposing any activity in those two, so that's acceptable answers for me. Okay. Uh, okay. Like, a, like a not applicable? Type yeah, occur. zero or not applicable yeah. or something yeah. for the future. I think it just makes it clear for all of us. Up just here. in case there's any questions from somebody else down the line that there's you know, no doubt on it. Okay. Thank you. If you want us to make that a condition, we could certainly put that designation in that application. You do that tonight, I, I would like to see it. I highlighted it because yeah. I wasn't yeah. I wasn't certain if you just forgot to fill that you part in. That yeah, in. I must have forgotten to put that in. I yeah. Mean, right. Calculate what the wetlands square footage is on the site. The impact we know is, is zero. Yeah. But yeah. the but the, uh, the first first space there, yeah, that, that should be filled in. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Somebody wanna I will make a motion to um, move to um, an administrative approval with the condition that we fill in that portion with the wetlands property square feet for item DPN number 2012-08-31. Mr. Chair, I second that. Okay. Motion made by Jill, seconded by Frank. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And thank you for your patience last yes. meeting. Yes. I appreciate it yeah. very much. Problem. That's right. Got it. We got it done. Now we go to zoning on uh, Thursday. Yes. Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Next item on the agenda: other business. Um, IWW missing a official map update discussion. <coughs> Anything new on that? Or does that just keep floating from agenda to it, agenda? It I don't does. know if we even need it on. Uh, there was quite a bit of discussion uh, as a result of the last meeting we had in July where, where the Conservation Commission was um, concerned that there was, you know, there were some discrepancies in the map. And I think that based on that, they put more effort into getting this map revised and then we could uh, have one map that we all look at and we all work off of. That works. Um, oh, one other item that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention. When the Conservation Commission was in front of us, I did receive a call the following day from the chairman, Gretchen Pfeiffer Hall, who um, unfortunately, she apologized, but she was um, referencing old regulations. So she wanted to let us know that um, we weren't necessarily incorrect. She was just um, looking at old regulations. So I believe she has a copy of the new ones. I believe we all do. So if you don't, just let Jim know. Correct. Um, okay. Next regular meeting is Tuesday, October 2nd, 7 o'clock, Council Chambers. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a, I'll make a motion to adjourn. A motion made by Joe, seconded by Donna. All in favor? Roby? Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you.